Meteorologist Abby Coney digging deeper into where we stand with the fire threat in our region. Abby. Yeah, hi, Maria. So, so far this year, Washington and Oregon have had two times the number of fires through this time last year. To talk more about what to expect for this fire season, I would want to bring in fire meteorologist Matthew Deer with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. Matthew, good morning. Hey, morning, Abby. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're really glad you're with us here this morning to break this all down. How has this summer stacked up compared to other recent fire seasons? Right. So um, 2022, if you remember, uh, very late snow season. We had snow sticking around all the way through July, and that really tamped down fire concerns for the beginning of that season. Um, this year, uh, snow was off a bit earlier, and we've seen a lot more ignitions on the west side than we typically do. They've stayed small, they've stayed in the brush, but um, it's definitely concerning as we head deeper into the fire season. And then let's also talk about the overall forecast. Okay, so the National Interagency Fire Center says that Western Washington is facing a significant risk for wildfires August, September, and October. Do you agree with this forecast, and are we on track for that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I coordinate with the, the NIFC folks uh, very regularly, and, and what they're saying is that there is an above average chance for significant wildfires um, through October west of the Cascades. We've got a severe drought across much of the northern Cascades and creeping into the Olympics, and we've seen how easy it is to get ignitions on the west side. Like I said, they have not gone big. We have not had a Bolt Creek-like event, um, but uh, as we move deeper into the summer, um, strong east wind events do become much more likely, and that's when we see um, our bigger fires west of the Cascades. So we're really entering that prime time to get more concerning fires, and with the number of ignitions we're seeing, uh, yeah, I, I definitely have concern for, for the rest of fire season in the west west of the Cascades. I really appreciate you bringing up those easterly winds because it is really amazing how quickly things can take a turnaround here as soon as we get those hot and dry easterly winds going. So people definitely need to stay tuned for that. Matthew, I want to ask you about this week. What are your concerns this week for fires in western Washington and then looking ahead to the next three months? Right. So just this week, I mean, we've already seen I-5 shut down because of because of a brush fire up near Marysville. And there was an ignition yesterday uh, along the coast near Mo Clips. So, um, yeah, like I said, we're not seeing those strong winds, but it's it's dry and it's it's warm. Um, we're going to stay warm west of the Cascades through at least Sunday. Um, highs uh, down in the South Sound in the mid to upper 80s. So um, asking people to, to yeah remain cautious, especially along the roadways where that brush is very, very easy to ignite right now. Uh, fires, smoke, that's a really big concern for us here and it's a worry that we have. So uh, last question for you, uh, what can people do to lower the risk for wildfires? And then is there any volunteer work people can do to help with forest management in our state? Yeah, so I, I think that the biggest thing that folks can do um, that, that has the largest impact on a wide scale is just making sure that the area surrounding your home, uh, any structures you have, is cleared of brush, debris, so that if there is a fire, um, firefighters rolling through your neighborhood don't have to spend that extra time uh, trying to clear out a lot of that brush and debris and save your home. It really kind of is a is a force multiplier, you could say, by, by making it so your home is, is defensible and not as prone to wildfires you're saving uh, a lot of resources if there was a fire in your area. Oh, Matthew, thank you for breaking down where we stand, what we can do as individuals. Matthew Deer with Washington State Department of Natural Resources, thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks, Abby, anytime. Appreciate it.